Hi Booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to bring to you all my possibilities for my April TBR. So we're going to kick off first of all with the subscriber choice and thank you so much to all of you who voted. Last week I showed you five books I was thinking about um, reading for April and asked you to vote. Um, so thank you so much for all of you who voted and commented. I really really appreciate the fact that you're showing me that you're there and giving me your opinion as well, which was great. Um, this, the vote was actually really quite widespread, so I'm going to really try and read the other four books that didn't win um, at some point in the year to give you my feedback on those ones, because clearly there's quite a lot of people who are um, quite curious about those books. But the winner was... The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. So I'm really pleased because um, Laura Purcell is an author I've been wanting to try for quite a while. So now is my opportunity. This is a very um, gothic, quite dark, creepy book. It's historical fiction and centers around a girl called Elsie who when she's pregnant gets sent to a country estate mansion and there she discovers a wooden figure which is called um, the silent companion and this mysterious wooden figure happens to resemble Elsie herself. So yeah a lot of you said to me that you'd really enjoyed this one and it was very creepy so yeah really looking forward to that one so thank you very much again. Now I have a couple of body reads in April and the first one is with Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures and I'll link her channel down below and we are reading together The Angels Game by Carlos Ruiz Safon. This is the second in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books series. Bizarrely, I've read number one, which of course was the famous The Shadow of the Wind, um, but I've also read number three, but not number two. So this I put on my TBR Vets at the beginning of the year, 12 books which I identified that I've had the longest on my TBR. Um, when I made that video, Berna reached out to me and said she'd also got it on her shelf um, and asked if we could read it together, So, which is fantastic. So I love buddy reading with Berna. Um, this is, of course, um, translated from the Spanish, as Stefan um, was Spanish. Unfortunately, he passed away, I think, was it last year? Um, but this centres around David Martin, who is a sensationalist novelist. And um, it's set in Barcelona. And he is basically going to get involved in a, like a locked room where there are... Um, newspapers and photographs from the past and he's sort of going to uncover some sort of mystery. So yeah we've already started because um, the day when I film is the 3rd of April and we started yesterday so already we've been exchanging um, comments and um, yeah I think it's going to be a really good one. Now my second buddy read is with Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Again um, fantastic channel and I'll link her down below as well. This is my first time buddy reading with Jolene so I'm really excited and we are going to read The Silver Sparrow by Tayari Jones. Um, I loved um, An American Marriage by Tayari Jones who I think won the Women's Prize for Fiction um, a couple of years ago, two or three, three years ago it must be now. Um, yeah loved the writing so I'm really excited to get to this one. This centres um, around James with the and it is set in 1980s Atlanta in the US and James Witherspoon happens to have two lives. He has his public one but he also has his secret one and from those two families from what I can understand he has two daughters who don't know that the other exists. They become friends and as this friendship develops I think they um, realise that there are secrets and I think these secrets explode and that's all I know at this point so I'm very excited as well to get started with this one with Jolene. And this month I'm also participating in a read-along of Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. Now this is hosted by the lovely Gemma from Gem of Books. I will link her channel down below. She has created um, a Voxer group um, with quite a few familiar um, booktubers already involved. Um, I'm sure if you go over to her channel um, and approach her if you wanted to be involved, I'm sure she would allow you to be into the group. Um, so check out her details um, down below. We are taking the whole month, as I say, to read this together and roughly one part per 10 days. So we're going to try and get through the three parts. Um, the Voxer group is already buzzing. I have not started yet. So I need to get my skates on um, and start reading the first few chapters and contribute to that conversation. This of course is historical fiction and starts in 1911 in Korea. And we follow a girl called Sunja who 
from what I understand, when she becomes pregnant, she is taken away from Korea to Japan. And I think it's basically um, a real sort of um, powerful saga that we're going to follow. Um, I've heard some great things about this and I actually, two of my lists it's on, it's on my TBR vets because I've had it such a long time. So it's another TBR vets ticked off if I can get this one done this month. But also I, it's on my um, five star prediction list. So this is um, double whammy and this would be great because I've heard so many people love this book. I know that it's supposed to be a slow burn, but it does sound fantastic if you've got the time. So I thought being my school holidays that it is at the moment, um, I've got two weeks off. I should have said that at the beginning, actually, because I've got two weeks off for the Easter break. Um, I'm trying to do lots of great reading. And I think this could be the real time to get absorbed into this world. So yeah, very excited to get started on Pachinko. Now, like a lot of booktubers, um, I like to participate in Books and Lala's year-long readathon where she comes up with a prompt for every single month and this month is to find a book with a size word in the title. I actually didn't have that many when I came down to it actually but one I do have is A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabella Allende. Now those of you who've been with my channel for a while will know that I generally buy second-hand books however this was one that I treated myself to a little bit of retail therapy last year um, so it's a brand new book I love the cover because it's got all the sea, the waves, all in like this gold um, over this like light turquoise colour. And I read my first two Isabel Allende books last year and really enjoyed them and her writing and her characters in particular. Um, so again, this is historical fiction. We are um, in the Spanish Civil War and we are following a young doctor called Victor. And I don't know for what reason, but he basically um, gets put into exile, gets forced out of Barcelona. So we've got another Barcelona, like um, the Angels game, um, and is sent to Chile. So apparently it's about hope, belonging, exile, multi-generational, powerful love story. So I'm in. That sounds really, really good. Now, I'm really in the mood for some non-fiction as well. Um, and those of you who've been following my channel might remember that um, in January, I think it was, I read A Dog's Life by Peter Mayle. This was a reread for me. Um, and it just reminded me how much I love Peter Mayle's writing. So I think for a reread and for a non-fiction, I'm going to um, start the Year in Provence trilogy by Peter Mayle. So this is the first one. This is a memoir by Peter Mayle, um, telling us all about how he left the UK and settled with his wife in the beautiful Provence area of France. It's brilliant writing, it's witty, it's got a dry sense of humour. He tells us all different anecdotes about the locals and the rural life and the wine. Um, and it's, I just remember really loving it. So I'm hoping I might be able to get it on audiobook and just really escape to like French countryside, beautiful scenery. It just seems sort of fitting for like a spring theme. So yeah, really excited to kind of get my claws into this trilogy again. Now this year I've been really intentional about reading books set all over the world. And it looks like I'm going well on this month already because I've got Spain, Chile, um, Korea and Japan and France, actually, if I get that non-fiction. So that's really good in one month. Um, usually I pick from this box here, which has got about 30 countries in it because I've got books set in all of these um, countries. So each month I've been picking from this box. Now, unfortunately, last month I did not get to the book which I um, for the country that I picked. So I'm going to flip that into this month. And that book is um, The Missing Sister by Dinah Jeffries. And the country was Burma. Um, so I'm really in the mood actually for a romance um, with a historical setting. Um, I really like Diana Jeffrey's writing. I don't know if some of you know um, The Tea Planter's Wife, which was set in Ceylon, the former Sri Lanka. Um, and it's really easy um, reading, but it's usually great um, characters and with a historical setting. I, I really, really love it. Diana Jeffrey's um, grew up here in Asia and most of her books are set in different countries in Asia. And she really gets it right from the, um, the travels I've done throughout Asia. So I really Really enjoy those and I'm really in the mood for as I say a little bit of a romance so I shall really try hard to get to this one and the next book I'm going to be reading is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck um, 
This is for my son because my 15 year old son, who will soon be 16, he has GCSE exams coming up in May, um, which for those of you who are not part of the UK British system are external public exams that you take um, in your um, year 11 year. Um, this is for his English literature. He has to answer a whole paper on Of Mice and Men. So I've read this before, so has he, but we over this holiday are going to be tackling this together so that we can and um, discuss it and analyse it and pull it apart and get him ready for that exam. So yeah, I don't think this needs any introduction. Everybody knows of Mice and Men. It's a, it's a modern classic, very, very well um, known. And most people have been examined on it as well at some point. So here we go again. Now, a month long readathon that I'm going to partake in is Picture This Readathon. And this is hosted by Jack from Spread Book Joy and Shelley from Shelley Swearingen. Again, link both their channels down below, fantastic channels. Go and check out their announcements because this is all about picture books. And they are promoting everybody. Um, to read picture books throughout the month of April. So I have a pile here. I've been in my school library this week, choosing some really fantastic ones here. There are six prompts, um, three from each of the ladies, so which you can um, fit your books to. So I'm not gonna go through these now, because I, what I'm gonna do is, um, during the two week school holiday, I'm going to read these myself, and then I'm going to read the ones I really like with my class when I go back to school. My seven and eight year olds, and and see their feedback as well which I find really interesting with picture books because me as an adult I get different things out of them than the children do um, my opinion on the illustrations the message of the story it's really interesting to compare what an adult sees and is drawn to compared to them so really excited for this readathon can't wait to see other people's um, videos to get some really other good ideas now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will be like, well, Nikki, where's the thriller? Where's the crime? Where's the mystery? Because usually I have quite a number of those. Um, so yeah, I seem to have quite a lot of historical fiction here um, this month so far. Although I guess this one has loosely a mystery in it as well. So what I might add in, I might add in Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Riley Sager is an author that I have never tried and he's on my list for authors to try in 2022. I know though that it's supposed to be quite dark that book and seeing as though I've got this one kindly chosen by yourselves I, uh, I might feel like I've had quite a lot of dark creepiness so I might switch that out for a crime. Of course what I haven't included is an Agatha Christie so far so I might go for a sort of lighter crime um, for that or even an audiobook um, mystery. I'm hoping to get to quite a few audiobooks because being off as I say, for two weeks. I'm hoping that I'm going to do lots of walks. This morning, I've been around the um, Botanic Gardens here in Singapore, um, did like over an hour and a half walk, and I was listening to an audiobook. And so I think I'm going to get through quite a lot of audiobooks in this fortnight as well. So that will be a wait and see. Come back and see when you get to April wrap-ups to see which crime thriller mystery I did go to in the end. So lots of possibilities, really excited for the month ahead. Please let me know what is the book that you are most anticipating, most looking forward to in April. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from my channel and um, I will see you for another video very soon. Take care, bye.